things that we can both do. They're unique roles and they're complementary roles. Although this is rejected by most of the modern world. But let's talk about some of the differences. There are physiological differences. We all don't have the same parts. And for the most part, these are obvious. There are physiological differences. Women are built different than men in virtually every way. You know that you can take a skeleton and somebody that knows what they're looking at can take a complete skeleton that's laying down with nothing, no kind of meat, no kind of skin or nothing and immediately tell if it's a man or a woman. Immediately. So we're different all the way through. Yeah, we got bo- oh, we got hands and we got feet and we got eyes and a nose and a mouth and, and all that, but, but the similarities end very shortly thereafter. There are temperamental differences between men and women. The emotional makeup is different. We are wired differently. You don't hear too many fellas having to take hormone pills. After a hysterectomy. Even if you decided to be a woman, I can't wait till they try to do that. Some, some old boy goes to court to ask him to give him a hysterectomy because he thinks he's a woman. Y'all laughing. Y'all laughing. It's about that goofy. They, you know what, Sister Maria? That ain't never going to happen. It ain't never going to happen. The only way it's ever going to happen is if you sue one doctor to put them parts in there and then you sue another one to take them out the next day. And historically, men and women have reflected a natural adaptation to these roles. Men and women respond, react, receive information differently. Men have traditionally functioned in the roles requiring heavy lifting and more manual labor, while women have functioned in the role of a caregiver. And that is primarily by design because you do know that baby bottles ain't been around all that many years. And it would have been a lot of trouble for mama to get up in the morning and pack a lunch and go to the field and daddy to stay home and nurse the baby. Huh? So... Some of the things were naturally gravitated to by design, Brother David. Okay? By design. It was meant to be that way. By the one who made everybody. What, Brother Ray, I'm not going to ask him to tell it. But, has, and it ain't, it ain't nothing embarrassing, Sister Betty, don't worry. Uh, but he told me the other day about, uh, he had a, a swarm of, Bees all clustered up on one of his trees. Have y'all ever seen that before? Big old long cluster. Well, it was there last year on another tree way up, but now it came back on a on a uh, uh, a smaller tree. And he hired, I believe Daryl hooked him up with somebody to uh, uh, that, that got rid of them. And he started telling me about the procedure that he would go through. And he sprayed some water and stuff. And then he started telling about, and I don't understand all, Brother Ray could tell you it was very, very interesting, is he would shake that tree and then spray sugar water, and whatever he ended up doing, they would all go right down into that box that they never had even been in before. And it's because they was designed to do that. And you, you, you really want to hear something interesting, Brother Ray can tell you all about it. But the things that go on in this world, Brother David, they operate that way because God designed them. You do know that there ain't no dogs running around here going and scratching on the vet's door saying, make me a girl dog. <laughs> it ain't nothing but dumb old humans trying to do that silly, ignorant junk. No, I, I'm telling you the truth now. Because God designed everything. God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And you, and you got to be half nuts to feel the Holy Ghost teaching like I'm teaching tonight. <laughs> but Brother David, the entire world 
operates the way God made it to operate. The entire world, all except me. Mankind is the only one that has the power of choice. That's why the Bible says, order my steps in your word. Bring me, the planets go where they're supposed to. The earth spins like it's supposed to. Read sometimes. Read sometimes how intricately designed the earth is on its axis. That it if even shifted a millionth of a degree, every one of us would start flying off into outer space. It works that way because it was designed that way. And mankind is designed to be like God made us. So there's differences, physiological differences. Let's talk about equality. That's a catchphrase nowadays. Biblically. Now this is going to come as a surprise to some folks, especially men and a few women. Biblically, there is no dominion for one gender over the other. That, that, that business about the old boy dragging his club... And going in and when his wife don't have supper ready, beating her over the head with it, that's nuts. That ain't in the Bible. That's not the way you were designed. That's something man wanted to crank up. There is to be a complementary relationship between men and women. The first place is obviously sexually. Don't nobody get nervous. I ain't going to talk nasty in church. But First Corinthians, the Bible talks about it. First Corinthians chapter number 7, verse number 3 and 4. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. That word benevolence would be better translated as affection. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, due affection, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body but the husband, and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body but the wife. Paul gave very clear instructions on sexuality. Notice the husband and wife references. He never referred to the husband and the husband. And the wife and the wife. Fornication. Sex before marriage. Sex in addition to 